but you were committing, according to this, these indictments, two different crimes yes. during that event. Serious. I mean, you can go to jail up to four years, yes. state jail. Are you getting a lawyer? Yes. No. Can I get a clear form? Why? Why should the taxpayers pay for your mess? Like me, like everybody else who makes a mistake, we have to pay. Absolutely. Are you independent or are you living off the grid or is everybody paying your way in life or what? No, I would. Okay, then but go hire a lawyer. There's the defendant wearing all black, detained in uh, handcuffs by other officers. The investigation showed that the defendant went to the residence with the intent to assault the resident, entered the residence without effective consent, which, as I guess, resulted in this uh, burglary habitation, wielding a crowbar and attempting to strike the people inside. They were able to over uh, to detain him until police arrived. Shortly after he's placed on probation, he's testing positive for all those drugs he doesn't use anymore. What do you want to do? Uh, we will race to this hearing as soon as possible. Okay. Just tell me when y'all are ready. This afternoon? We just need to verify back time so we can. I can advise them properly about the state's offer, Judge, without verification. Back. What is the state's offer? Offer. I'm curious about. State's because offer was court. I don't have to accept it. This state's is, offer was this two probation. years. Two years spent time since he's already been in prison on the other one. You're gonna have to renegotiate that. Welcome to Judge Stevens' courtroom in Jefferson County, Texas, where today's cases show the judge's unwavering commitment to accountability and justice. In the first case. A defendant involved in a high-speed police chase faces the repercussions of his actions. But what angers Judge Stevens isn't just the defendant's escapades, but his expectation for taxpayers to fund his legal representation. The judge is clear, he believes individuals should take responsibility and procure their own counsel. And the second case involves a defendant entangled in more severe criminal activities, repeatedly violating the law without showing an ounce of remorse. Now seeking a bond, this defendant faces Judge Stevens' scrutiny for his actions. Will Judge Stevens extend empathy or understanding to these defendants? Or will he stand firm, unwavering in his belief that accountability is non-negotiable? Stay tuned as Judge Stevens navigates these cases, ensuring justice is served. That's exactly what it was worth. Free advice over there. Who's cutting your hair now? You? You are? Oh my God. Are you using like a, are you doing it with your eyes closed? It's, it's a mohawk. You've got like a mohawk. <laughs> Mr. West is finishing up. He's got delay. He'll be here as soon as he can. Was that a tribute to Port H.S. Groves Indians winning the uh, state championship? <laughs> Jerry and Hamilton? We got a couple of cases here. You, you know. And... 23 CR1... Uh, Four five seven. You are charged with the state jail felony of unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, and in twenty three CR one four five eight, you were charged with evading arrest or detention with a motor vehicle. Happened on the same day. It looked like it was the same set of events, but you were committing, according to this, these indictments, two different crimes yes. during that event. Serious. I mean, you can go to jail up to four years. Yes. State jail. Are you getting a lawyer? Yes. No. Can I get a clear form? Why? Why should the taxpayers pay for your mess? Like me, like everybody else who makes a mistake, we have to pay. Absolutely. Are you independent, or are you living off the grid, or is everybody paying your way in life, or what? No, I, I would. Okay, then but go hire a lawyer. You lost me because uh, due to this situation. You lost the job. Okay. Uh, what did you do? What was your job? Oh, I was a contractor. I was I worked for wage one. How much were you making? I was making seventeen an hour. So yeah, that's about, that's about fifty with over a little overtime. That's good. that's. But you lost that. Yes. Sir. Or are you, are you trying to get an? Are you trying to get another job? Yes. Sir. I just recently got my. This happened on July eighth. I just got a job. Okay. 
All right, you're back to working? Yes, sir. How much are you making? That yes, amount? Yes, sir. Well, you're going to go hire a lawyer? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not going to. This, these are messages. Have you ever been in trouble before? Yes, sir. Um, well, it's fixable. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you four weeks to go talk to some people and uh, see if you can hire somebody, come back, and we'll talk about where you are on that. Yes, but. Sir. Look, these are your, you've got two strikes. A third strike gets you out. Don't do that. Okay. And this is fixable if you've not been in trouble before. It's fixable. So get a reset and go talk to some lawyers, then come back, tell me where you are on that. Okay. Thank you. Caesar, what are we going to do here on that? Spot here. Okay. There's a motion to revoke probation. Yes, your honor. Regular probation. Yes, sir. So he's not entitled by law to uh, uh, bond, but uh, I'll certainly. But I mean, isn't this one of those that we either need to work something out or have it here? Judge, we right? Have, we have a plea offer. Hello. From the state. Okay. We haven't verified that time, so we can't. I can't advise them. Okay. Advise. But I'm not letting him out. Otherwise, I'm on regular probation until we can resolve this. Especially when I'm looking at these kinds of, I mean, there's a substantive crime and positives. And I mean, what do you want to do? You want to have a hearing on this or try to work it, work some something out if that's what it's going to be? Judge, I think we could reach an agreement again. We just need to come back tonight. We've been trying for, since I got the case. Why don't we do that? But y'all have to confirm whether he had a detainer placed on him. That would take a couple of phone calls. Um, so, so there's another charge, maybe. Pending. Oh, he's doing another it, jurisdiction. It missed him in the court. Yes, sir. And it, well, no, there was there was a he was he was in he was in penitentiary on another charge. This they're trying to determine when the detainer was while he was in the penitentiary because it happened since okay. this. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do, Turn Judge? Up. We wanted to ask court plea bond. It's okay. You let's go through this. He's on regular probation and while on probation, when there's allegations, I set a warrant for his arrest, and I don't, I don't grant bonds generally. I always consider, but it would have to be an unusual set of circumstances. That's what you want to go through a hearing. Go ahead. He's your Cody Caesar, right? Yes, sir. All right. You were charged. With burglary of a habitation, you were sentenced to 10 years in prison, probated for 10 years on March 9th of 2020. Oh, yeah. Correct. Your, your motion, you want uh, the, uh, you are not entitled to a bond by law and on, on a, an offense where it's a burglar of second degree felony, uh, correct? Burglary of habitation, second degree felony, with you had. 10 violations of probation, including committing family violence assault, failing to report the probation change of address, providing a urine sample that tested positive for benzodiazepines, tested positive for methamphetamine, tested a positive for tetrahydrocannabinol, tested positive for Xanax, tested positive for methamphetamine, tested positive for tetrahydrocannabinol, Failing to participate in and successfully complete thinking for change, moral recognition therapy, failing to obey, stand by. failing to obey all rules and regulation of the supervision jurisdiction as directed by the court and violate. That's not specific. That's that's thrown out. There's a special amendment that that applies. Yes, but yes, it's sir. not in the allegation in the motion. So that's, but. Go ahead, whatever it is you want to do. But thank you, Judge. Your Honor, he was uh, Mr. Caesar was charged uh, with a misdemeanor assault, family violence that involved uh, yanking a necklace from the complaining witnesses. Let's say I let's say forget that. Okay. He has been in just he, just for this purpose. He's been in TDCJ custody for almost two and a half years to the day. Uh, during that time, he was the clerk to the chaplain uh, for approximately a year. He, uh, his daughters were very young when he went in, and 
Uh, he was able to get his dissertation rights to his daughters. He has completed five different courses, including a uh, parenting course, um, which is called the Complete Quest for Authentic Manhood. We now exhibits stay if they could like tenure for your review. Court as well. <laughs> Judge. These are the certifications he's completed. There's five different ones. Um just name. Just read them. Then the records. Thank you. Uh the first is Quest for Authentic uh Manhood, Larry Gist unit, where he studied parenting, finances, budgeting, spousal interaction. Um, did some uh what was called core problem therapy. He also completed uh of note the Bridges to Life, which was a victim of impact and group therapy program, and he completed anger management uh through UTMB, which was a group therapy therapy and a uh basically pre-sense report. Go ahead. And it was a uh Prevention monitoring program. I'm sure the court's familiar with the anger management. Those were the courses of note, but like as I noted, he's completed five courses in parole, did an assessment and did grant him parole. Uh, and he was paroled early, actually. He was supposed to be paroled in January and they let him out a couple of weeks ago, last week. For these reasons, we think that he has shown that he's not a threat of flight. Uh, as far as the other issues go, Mr. Caesar will continue to attend all court hearings uh, until we can resolve the motion to revoke conviction. This reason we asked the court to set a bond in the amount it was originally set in this case, $20,000. All right, let me get this straight here. I'm looking at the pre sentence report, and this was. Uh, uh, Home invasion. Well, let's see. There's the defendant wearing all black, detained in uh, handcuffs by other officers. The investigation showed that the defendant went to the residence with the intent to assault the resident, entered the residence without effective consent, which, as I guess, resulted in this uh, burglary habitation, wielding a crowbar and attempting to strike the people inside. They were able to over uh, to detain him until police arrived. Mr. Smith? And then the defendant says, I went to someone's house to confront them about an issue with my family. They opened the door, allowed me to come in, and once I was inside, they were over there. Which is, of course, completely different from uh, the crime he pleaded guilty to, which was uh, 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 entering a habitation without the effective consent of the complainant with intent to commit assault. So we we begin with this. So um, his criminal history includes uh, not only misdemeanors of deferred or unadjudicated probation uh, in for a misdemeanor possession of marijuana in 2009, driving while intoxicated in 2015, illegal possession of controlled substance in Orange County for 12 days of jail. But let's see, in 2010, five years deferred or unadjudicated probation, $1,400 in restitution. That was revoked in 2015. He was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment in that case. What county was that? Was that this county? Which it's it's right here. It's the first one under adult felony court history. We believe it's here, Your Honor. If I'm not mistaken, Your Honor. He actually was serving uh, sentences for Jefferson County. For, well, the question I guess is why wouldn't that use as an enhancement paragraph in this case? Because that was 2015. This offense occurred in 2019. Oh. Then, uh, so, I mean, he would have been enhanceable to a first-degree felon, but that wasn't done. Um, but it's considered by the court, I guess. Then 18 months state jail for it, delivery of a controlled substance, then illegal possession of a tr controlled substance in, in 2015, and an illegal possession, two, two 
illegal possessions in 2015. So his criminal history is one, two, three, four convictions of felonies, right? Two state jails, one TDC, and a 10-year TDC. One patrol, right? controlled substances, offenses, state jails, all before he commits this offense. So we still, nonetheless, place him on regular uh, probation for what looks like a very disturbing set of circumstances. And then, yes, he's alleged to have committed an assault, but all of these are allegations, but we can certainly do the subs the uh, urine samples right now if we wanted with the probation office, which would reflect, let's see, how many different issues in his history now for drugs. So, uh, but he says all of these drugs he doesn't use now. Although, in the pre-sentence report, although shortly after he's placed on probation, he's testing positive for all those drugs he doesn't use anymore. What do you want to do? Uh, no bond. No. I don't think these circumstances fit a bond. We will race to this hearing as soon as possible. Then. Just tell me when y'all are ready. This afternoon? We just need to verify back time so we can I can advise them properly about the state's offer, Judge, without verification. Back. What is the state's offer? Offer, I'm curious about. State's because offer this was court. I don't have to accept it. This state's is, offer was this two probation. years. Two years spent time since he's already been in prison on the other one. You're gonna have to renegotiate that. I'm not gonna accept that. Not with this criminal history. What he did. We're looking at that. Yeah. That's terrible. This pre-sentence pre report had four convictions, and then we're going to give him the minimum. For getting on, giving him a, a Christmas gift, kind of, <laughs> by giving him another chance. And he went right into committing, and drugs are a crime. So we were testing positive for that, but we didn't hit him for a substance of offense. But they're serious. Yeah. Notwithstanding the first case, but uh, of an assault, but no, no, that's. Y'all can either renegotiate something, but no, not under these circumstances. I mean, that would be given, given them the minimum for four convictions before and then committing these kinds of violence. I don't think that's appropriate under this court's watch. Okay. We have nothing further to do. Y'all decide when everyone can be ready for an on NPRP here on the get back on. Thank you, Judge. Comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.